Teamsters power is what we're going to be talking about first tonight. Um, and whew, wow. They, they've had a heck of a week, huh? Um, and I want to, I want to showcase some of the stuff that that's been going on over, over with our friends, the Teamsters, uh, big supporters and shout out to yep. what they've been doing this week. Power. Uh, labor power. So it starts out Monday morning with our friend JB. Now we were here last Sunday night on the 20th and 16th. So literally Monday morning, JB's asking, do you think the white house is going to force a teamsters union contract? And most people are saying yes. And had a decent, decent number of votes. Um, and, but I said, and now I was looking at, well, <clears throat> this is not a good sign that you've got Sean O'Brien claiming that he's asked the White House not to intervene. Um, now, Cat City Cool claims that it's an excellent sign that the team serves are not playing around. But I said, what are they going to do when the White House does intervene and UPS brings in scabs? Because that's what's being set up here. Um, well, that's what they want to happen, et cetera. So that's one thing that happened. However, later on, uh, there was another thing that happened, which is that also no bueno, UPS to train non-union employees as talks stall with the union for 340,000 employees. Now, again, this was last Monday. This happened since we were here last together. So I wanted to, to showcase a couple of those things okay. because a couple of big things happened since then. Then, mm. okay, on Wednesday morning, the, the People City Council tweeted this out, that UPS, or the UPS drivers had a massive rally, okay, um, and you could see just how many signs and how many people are standing at that rally, and I know cameras can kind of tell, tell a story and be framed to tell a certain story, but that's a that's a pretty substantial number of workers there. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna play the the audio. Hear it. Pump it to me, please. Oh. One of those buttons. Okay. So this is Sean O'Brien, who's the head of the Teamsters Union. Again, 340,000 UPS yeah. workers he represents. So People City Council was there. Uh, I then said that the sound that you hear is all the executives at UPS simultaneously shitting their pants. And then we got even more good news because the 3,300 UPS pilots said that they will stand in solidarity with the 340,000 Teamsters should they choose to strike and not fly. Here's the article. And this, like, this warmed my heart. So the union representing UPS pilots says they will not cross picket lines if Teamsters drivers and package sorters walk off the job when the current contract expires on August 1st resulting in the immediate shutdown of the Express Logistics Company's global air operations. UPS has 3,300 pilots who are represented by the Independent Pilots Association, a separate union from the Teamsters. But if the Teamsters go on strike, we will honor that strike and we will not fly. Sorry, I just want to make this a little bigger, make it a little bit easier for everyone to see. Right? UPS pilots are allowed under their collective bargaining agreement to honor primary picket lines and did that for 16 days during the Teamsters strike in 1997. <laughs> it's... It, it's critical. So in 97, 100% of their pilot group respected your picket lines by not turning an aircraft wheel on behalf of the company. Right? It's, the solidarity is awesome. We will honor any potential IBT strike and act in sympathy with our fellow workers at UPS. Even with freighters in service, a strike by 340,000 package drivers would effectively ground most UPS airlines operations. Right, because there would be few, if any, Personnel to load and unload aircraft, process packages, deliver them to and from airport facilities. But they would try to hire. Yeah, here. It says it's training non-union employees to handle packages in the event that there is a labor disruption. But this is very good news. But, however, however, we don't have a strike fund. 
proud of the pilots for the UPS not have a strike fund. That's scary. Now, I just hope that when it comes down to it, that they actually do strike in solidarity. I'm guessing that they will. And that, by the way, is bringing management back to the table. And that's <clears throat> the other thing that I wanted to, to mention here is that so here's another that they're just practicing. This was another Wednesday article from um, Labor Notes, Luis Feliz Leon, as well as Alexandra Bradbury. She's the managing editor over there. So she's like the big cheese. Um, people are paying attention. It would be the largest strike at a private employer in decades. So they are trying very hard to avert a strike and they want to make a deal. And we'd like to see them make a deal as long as the drivers and the workers and the union members get what they deserve and what they're asking for. Um, this lays out a lot of what they want. Teamsters have won TAs at, to end two-tier two, two tier pay. So now the $15 an hour part-time versus $20 an hour full-time and for six-day work for drivers, right? Installing air conditioning in new trucks, making Martin Luther King Day a paid holiday, eliminating driver-facing surveillance cameras. Very important there, right? We don't want to see that facial recognition nope. stuff coming in. So this nope. is all good news. Um, and I think that the pilots really making that move made a huge, a huge difference in why management is coming back to the table and they're doing all they can to avoid this because they thought that if they could still fly, that they could weather through with these scabs, but they can't replace 3,300 pilots. They would really be finished. Um, right. Negotiations stalled on top economic issues. Front and center is the union's demand to raise the pay of the part-timers who do the most of the unseen work in warehouses, sorting, loading, unloading parcels. Backbreaking pace while supervisors scrutinize and hassle them. Of course they do. Because their number, you know, their pay and their bonuses are based upon the time management and the time efficiency of the, the staff. Um so that's their incentive is to work these guys practically to death. I mean, they're not they're not financially struggling, but they still have to you gotta have a life i mean and they're blue collar workers so a strike would cost estimated ups 170 million dollars a day i love seeing that competitors could only absorb yep. a fraction of its 20 million daily packages but like it says the 3300 pilots represented by an independent union have pledged that they will not cross the law the, the picket lines which is huge but, right, part-timers deserve more. We've been saying that for a long time. Part-time starting pay has crawled up from $8 an hour to just fifteen fifty today, which is good, right? But here's a preloader. He works from 4 a.m. to 9 a.m., then delivers food for Instacart in the afternoon, racking up 12-hour days because he's only got part-time. So he's making 15 how much? Sixteen sixty-five an hour, and working okay. five five Barely hours. To right. Rape. Well, Lu Luigi, I know Luigi Morris is in the same type of situation where he can't even get full-time hours for UPS. He's got to find another job. Right. He does photography and he writes and he does journalism, but he's also got you know another one of these gig economy type of roles in order to be able to try to. Hey, Rhett, and he lives, I believe, either in Brooklyn or Queens or somewhere <laughs> somewhere out in New York. Um, UPS is a numbers company. She urges members to request a team lift if a package weighs more than 70 pounds, right? But some people would just rather deal with the heavy box <laughs> rather than a supervisor yelling at them. The preloaders are heaving 150-pound boxes in swel sweltering heat without enough fans. Right, they want to give a heavy slap on the wrist, take time away from people, money away. It's a militaristic style of discipline, and that's just it. 
Supervisors exert tyrannical control, posting schedules late, screwing up payroll, <laughs> threatening to fire you, or just stand, staring at you for 20 minutes while you race to unload a trailer at the mandated speed of a thousand packages an hour. I mean, this is UPS has massive profits. Um, they did $8.6 billion in stock buybacks. We covered that last week in the last two or three years. And that alone would more than cover the cost to take care of all of this. What they don't want is to set a precedent and to set a wave of everybody across the board getting raises because this is what union can deliver potentially is raising all boats. So, Sean O'Brien, yeah, boats. We'll, we'll, we'll have some more boats later, but um, Sean O'Brien made a <laughs> campaign theme of his willingness, even enthusiasm, to strike UPS. And I, I like hearing those words because, you know, it's willing. He's, you have to be willing to actually go through with it. Um, and I don't think that a lot of the previous leadership, I don't think that. The leadership for the UAW, for example, which is potentially on the verge of a strike. I don't think they are excited to potentially strike and hold corporate accountable and really bring corporate to their knees. So unless corporate is planning on giving in to the demands of the workers, they're going to need to find a whole lot of workers, meaning 340,000, you know, blue collar Hard, hard laborers and 3,300 pilots in the next eight, nine days. That's good luck. Um, shout out to Joe, by the way, STFU Shitlib 3. INN's Joe is, works at the Philly Air Freight Hub. Uh, I do need to talk to his ramp manager. Uh, he did offer that at one point, and I completely have dropped the ball on that. And I need to get back. And now that we're getting close to strike, I really want to learn about what what they're telling him. What they're is he getting pressure from corporate inside? Is he getting corporate, you know, management pressuring him about what they're going to do and about organizing? Are they trying to stop them from organizing? Are they holding, you know, anti union meetings, for example? I, I don't know. I don't know if Teamsters are gonna put up with that stuff. I don't think that they will, but um, here it, here it is it was up to locals and the rank and file to pick up these tools and use them the power was built in tens of thousands of conversations in UPS hubs parking lots and cafes over the past year labor notes interviewed over two dozen UPSers far <coughs> more than we have to space to quote here for a taste of this rich organizing and I, this is this is organizing this is like and accomplishing stuff and holding management to account. And I, I want to see more of this. Um, I want to see more of this over with Amazon, which is why I'm kind of glad in a way that the Teamsters made a concerted effort two years ago. We covered that, if you remember. We were like, mm, is it really a good thing that the Teamsters are really making a, a, like a push to unionize Amazon nationwide? And, well, now Sean O'Brien is here. Um, he was not the leader of the Teamsters then. And I think that he's bringing a different kind of mindset to unionization, to what's happening over at UPS to, with the Teamsters for drivers and for workers. And he's got a fighting spirit. I can see it. So again, part-timers have a separate meeting after work since the shifts don't align. But to bring the groups together, they, they organize a barbecue. So that's the best thing they've done so far. We love seeing that. Drivers help pitch in for raffle prizes for food. Everyone brought their own tables and chairs. We set up at a local park. And just to get these drivers and these workers talking amongst themselves and sharing stuff and building camaraderie and building solidarity is is huge you know part-timers pledge to support a key demand 
of full-time drivers increasing their contribution to the Central Re Region Pension Fund. And the drivers would back part-timers demand for $25 an hour and more full-time jobs. Seems fair enough. Right? Everybody wins. Teamsters teaching Teamsters. And you've got Indiana part-timer and shop steward El Elba Lieb, who heard about TDU through word of mouth. Right, and went through its 2020 convention, hoping to join the Women's Committee. So in her 27 years of UPS, she had always seen herself as a fighter, but as an isolated one, she was trying to fight management, right, by herself. Suddenly the world opened up and, wait, they're teaching classes on how to be a steward? There's this group out there that was educating Teamsters on how to enforce their contracts. That's great. So... Yeah. Hey, we got some soundboard. We got soundboard, folks. 135 local UPS <clears throat> delivery drivers are out practice picketing, whereas the previous administration would have only sent business agents to do it. Business agents. Hey. Okay. Right. So we've got from 97 <laughs> till now, and these are some of the, they're interviewing Alano, who he was there in 1997. Right. They've got a few people. That now he had just started as a part time loader then, but now the energy had that people had afterwards, I felt connected to everyone. We accomplished something together, and I think they're going to accomplish something together again this time. I really do. Um, my feeling is, is that between the pilots, and yeah, here's the RIP to the two tier system, right? That the Teamsters campaign at UPS is reverberating throughout the labor movement. UAW President Sean Fain elected this year with the backing of a TDU-inspired rank-and-file movement, traveled to New York to rally with O'Brien. And then he went to the White House to play kissy face with Joe Biden. So I'm a little... Chief, Chief O'Brien? I am not as high on Sean Fain and the UAW, especially given their history with workers as um, the Teamsters, which have... A much different reputation, but they have always tended to be more about their workers than their management. In my experience. Bring back Jimmy Hoffa. Well, he was, what? Jimmy Hoffa the third was just Teamsters president a couple of terms ago, but I don't believe that he was terribly popular or effective. Not nearly. See, he, I don't know if he necessarily even came out of the rank and file. But I know that. What? Why is this? I'm sorry, everybody. Is this cut off? Look at that. It was okay for me. No, that screen was cut off for whatever reason. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why. But yeah, it was okay for you because you're seeing my whole screen. But ah, okay. Anyway, um, Alexandra. What? What? Yep. What? Yeah, thank yeah. you. I I feel as lost as Joe Biden sometimes <laughs> on on this stage. Um, in, <laughs> wow, and he's he's had a bit of a rough week, I would say. Um, but yeah, we yeah. can do practice. Not that was him, but right they they're gonna they're gonna bring UPS to their to their knees, and I I really am a believer. Can they just, in, can they just say practice picketing is picketing, and then therefore picket? Well. Except that they're not that? really on strike and they're it doing it on, well, no, because they're doing it on their okay. own time. So, okay. I mean, and are they doing it necessarily my, my like, point still stands? are they doing it in front of the UPS facility? I don't think so. I think they're like doing it in a parking I lot. Hope so. So, I think they're doing it in. I don't see why they wouldn't. Because they don't want to antagonize the situation. They're looking to negotiate a contract. Okay. Why not? Okay. I mean, good luck with that. Like, well, that's, you that's, know, you could do both. That's what they're doing. Um, all right. So what's going I mean, if on? It's over already here? not on company time. I, I, critical thinking. Do it. Typically, senior level executives, companies pay the premiums and receive the death benefit of the employee dies. Yes, I've seen that type of stuff too. 
um, insured uh, heirs or families do not receive a dime. I've seen that. Um, but usually it's not like a huge policy. It's 25 or 50 or 30,000 or whatever it is. But as a business, the cost to replace an employee that they have lost in any way in fake business, right? In any way, shape or form, I, I, I understand. I mean, it's, it's, it's harsh. It's, it's a terrible way to think. Um, but I get why they also take out that kind of life insurance on an employee because in order to replace it, they have an out-of-pocket cost that they can subsidize and supplement and plan for potentially. I'm not sure exactly My disappointment what... disappointment is immeasurable. Yes. I'm not sure what that costs them, and it doesn't cost them much, which is why they all do it. But there was more Teamster action this week, and that was with Yellow Freight. <clears throat> and... Teamster action? Yeah. What are, you, what are you trying to film now, bro? Hey, man. What are you... Well, uh, we've got we've got our, our boy our, our boy. Shout out to Luis Feliz Leon from Labor Notes. We sh we featured him in that last article. He co-wrote that. Here's one of he's also been following this Teamster story with Yellow Freight Corp. And I don't know if you've seen this video. This is a a one minute video that's been going around and I have about the pensions at Yellow Corp, which they say are not being lost but are no longer accruing. All right, that Yellow recently failed to fulfill their financial obligations regarding its pension payment, pension payments, and is on the verge of bankruptcy. And they're going to be filing Chapter Seven, I believe, as early as Monday. But I'm going to play this video, and it's really. Wait, hold on. Yeah, this guy went 30 years, and they took his pension, right? Yeah. So now we gotta do this again. Hey, with your chest. Tell me, tell me Dude, tell me Thirty years. That's, that's your motherfucking buddy. Tell them. Thirty years, dog. God damn it. Yeah. Fuck mom. everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Don't tell anyone to call that man dead. Fuck, 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 fuck that shit. Fuck you. Yeah, it ain't you. I mean, I'm That's surprised right. that didn't just turn into. It ain't you. Well, I'm surprised that didn't turn into. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. You're cool. And fuck you. I'm out. Yeah, here. Somebody you know? says Community Notes neglects to mention that when Yellow Corp is finalized in bankruptcy, there's a huge chance of pensions being lost, but execs and higher ups are getting their money and their assets. So, in essence, yes, they are losing their pensions, and this sucks so hard. Misty is saying that it's disgusting and asking RBN, hey, can we try to find this guy or someone who works here for their... What's that community note? Read that community organizing. note? Yeah, oh, it's terrible. It's from the Hill. Pensions at Yellow Court are not being lost. I know, I know. It's from the Hill. But are no longer accruing. Yellow Court recently failed to fulfill their financial obligations regarding its pensions payment. So they're no longer putting money into their pensions. So therefore, they don't have a fucking pension, the Hill. What well, are you doing? Well, they 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 Wait. still do the well, the money that was already there is still there, but on top of that, so now you've got the Teamsters, which um, are now stopping. They they're averted. They stop Yellow's attempt to thwart a strike over delinquent benefits contributions. So, the U.S. District Court of Kansas ruled today against Yellow Corp denying the company's request for an injunction to stop the Teamsters from striking. So Teamsters were saying, if you don't like put money into this account, if you don't continue to put it in, we're going to strike. Yeah, it's... Because what's going to end up yeah. happening is, is that the bank um, is going to end up seizing the account because you're not continuing to make payments on the account. So Yellow thought they could scheme oh. the system, but the law was on the side of the workers. Again, Sean O'Brien. So... Company has two more days to fulfill its obligations or we will strike. Teamsters at Yellow were furious and ready to act. Strong language. So what happened? 
Well, about three hours ago, now about four hours ago, I saw this from Luis. Strike averted at YRC Freight in Holland. Mm. The central states... Of course it is. And wealth, Health and well, Welfare Fund agreed Sunday to extend health care benefits for workers at Yellow Corp, operating companies YRC Freight in Holland, under intense pressure from Teamsters President Sean O'Brien and General Secretary Fred Zuckerman. Good. The extension of health care benefits for Teamsters and their families averts a strike at the freight companies, which could have begun on Monday after Yellow failed to make contractually obligated benefit payments of $50 million to central states on July 15th. Now, here's the thing. The agreement by central states at the urging of the Teamsters gives Yellow <laughs> 30 days to pay its bills with the understanding the company will do so within the next two weeks. That's only kicking the can down the road, guys. If... Right. But they may declare bankruptcy and blow this whole thing out. The intense Not, discussions. Right. But, but also, this is the only thing you're, you, this is the only part of the deal you want. This is, dude, I'd strike for everything else anyway. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. This is not your one thing. Right. The intense discussions between Teamsters leadership and central states successfully convinced fund trustees to reverse their previous decision that health care benefits would end on July 23rd if Yellow remained delinquent. O'Brien subsequently ordered the Teamsters National Freight Industry Negotiating Committee to meet in person with Yellow representatives on Sunday evening. Meetings will take place in D.C. to review the state of the company and the current contract. So now... Guess who won't show up? Joe Biden? Anybody from the Biden administration? I mean, no, I mean, I, I, I anybody don't... from the yellow, yellow, like, well, I, you know what I mean? I think yellow wants to stop the workers from striking, so they are going to be there. The reversal by central states will keep health care benefits paid. So central states is basically fronting this. Yellow better show up or Central States is going to end them as a company right now. That's effectively what they're Good. saying. So what they're saying is, as the Teamsters and them sit down, right, all right, they're going to keep benefits. Our members at YRC Freight and Holland cannot work without health care, and the Teamsters work tirelessly to ensure an immediate strike at Yellow could be averted. <coughs> right? So these, these discussions were not easy, but Central States has made meaningful movement under pressure from the union. So now... Instead of getting the fifty million dollars from from Yellow, now this central states has to provide health care to all the drivers as Yellow goes yeah. bus, right? But teams just need Yellow simply work too hard and have already given so much. We are seeking a real resolution, but to let this solution today <laughs> serve as a profound reminder that our members can only endure so many sacrifices. Yeah. Well. We'll see where this goes. Um, and I mean, this central states health and welfare fund cannot continue to fund workers. So somewhere yellow is going to have to come up with some kind of bridge, new financing that will cover the workers and keep them going, or they'll have to, um, you know, <laughs> I don't know what they'll have to go chapter seven and, Someone will buy it out and close the pension fund, and and that's what everybody wants to get their hands on. That's cash. You know, their pension fund has a ton of money because it, it was actually funding all of their employees, you know, their, their retirees. Um, but I'm glad that they've averted a strike temporarily because the workers still do need to work. I don't know how much of a strike fund they had. You know, props to Sean O'Brien for once again stepping up. And let me tell you, that guy has been all over the place. Um, his handle is at Teamsters SOB. So if you if you look him up and give him a follow at Teamster SOB, that's Sean O'Brien. Give him a, a follow. But um Oof. he's he's been all over the place. So if I look at well that we should talk about that too. Yeah. Stop working uh, I am with not, that lady. I am not a fan of them allowing AOC to grandstand. Yeah. Knucklehead. This would have been avoided if the Teamsters and Sean 
O'Brien didn't act so reckless and immature with 30,000 jobs by stopping yellow from completing their one yellow strategy. Well, I, here you go. Tomei, here, here's from Their husband out. about a puppy. Right? What about a puppy? No, I wanted to show that he's kind of been all over the know. place. You don't read. What about a puppy? Like, no, uh, I, pause. Back down, Ryan this? Riker. Okay. During the call, Tomei compared the negotiations to a disagreement she had with her husband about a puppy. Ooh. Yeah, that's bad. Did we rub her nose in it? With her $19 million that salary, or $19 million comp package, with $11.3 billion in profits last year. Garbage. Okay. No. Are you willing? Why are you willing to sacrifice 22,000 members? Well, some people are calling him out about the yellow deal. Sure. Um, you can see that, but and I, why are they calling him out? What's the overall consensus? Well, that they were going to be striking and now he's, Stop them from striking Not by striking. getting them health by getting them health care, but their company is still in deep trouble. And but is that is that everything they wanted? Like, what was their demands? They they have a list. If that was your only if that was your only demand was the health care, this is nothing. Like, I'm sure you wanted your minimum wage to be increased. I'm sure you wanted like better conditions and air conditioning in your vehicles and like, yeah, yellow, and, yellow and they're throwing freight. this healthcare thing at you. Right. Well, let's, let, let's take a, a closer look at what people are saying about him. Union still killing America. All right. Anyone know what brotherhood? All right. That's Teamsters Canada. I bet no labels doesn't support the unions. Right, but there were a couple of people there that I saw. So true if you agree to a two-week extension. I want to know, so why if it's not in good faith when UPS fuck us over every day? Right. Looks like Teamsters for the win. Your company intimidation techniques failed in case you wanted an update. I Did they? Uh, I. Yeah, please don't have AOC on they anything. They didn't get what they want? Yeah. You know, yesterday, again, he visited a local 20, 728 in Atlanta. He is all over the place. Like, that, to me, like, he's meeting with Teamsters. He is a voice and a champion for the Teamsters, and he is putting out specific messaging on is behalf he, of the workers and the people he represents. Yes, I do think he is. I, I don't. Do. If he's going to meet up with AOC and, and kill strikes that are actually happening... Yes, I you agree with that. might need to that. rethink that. Like having now, her, having her on and going on MSNBC is bad. Yes, I agree. And I'm uh, sure that's not the only Democrat he's willing to cater to to get any more power. Right. If Yellow like, files bankruptcy, there will you, be nothing to strike for. If you're doing that, you don't know, understand what's happening. Here, Teamster. Yeah, Sean O'Brien needs to find them good union jobs when Yellow goes down. Teamsters need to take care of Teamsters. Reach out to each other. We're helping out yellow friends best we can. Yes. Right. That's, and if they're already going to lose, the, I'd say continue to strike. They haven't started At to strike. At least that allows you to like, that's what I'm saying. But they've already called it off. Essentially. To get some health care. But I'm sure that wasn't the only demand. No. Definitely not. So it feels like union leadership is throwing the bargaining chips away when they have the power right now. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong, but I I doubt it. Well. Nobody at these workers, it does not seem that they unless they will be getting Look, I saw how much their strike fund is going to pay them. 
It's like five hundred bucks a week if you're a full timer, or two hundred and fifty dollars a week if you're if you're a part timer. You can't live on that. Yeah, but if their if their jobs aren't even if their jobs aren't even like they might be going away, right? Like, right. Isn't that what this is saying? I'm talking even about the UPS guys that they might shut down. I'm I feel talking, you. I'm talking about the UPS guys even, right? Like even. <laughs> Strike pay, solidarity strike pay is, yes, and we do. We support UPS workers. But understand that some of these workers, they're not in a position where they're already living paycheck to paycheck. They can't afford strike fund pay. Where's, where's the Teamster war chest? That's what the strike fund is. You get 500 bucks a week. That's what the war chest where is Where is it? What do you mean? I, I'm saying, like, they don't, I'm betting, they, I'm betting Teamsters have quite a bit more funding than that how many mm -hmm. like how many democratic dinners have they done to get cash mm -hmm. is what i'm saying like why are you not spending that right now if 500 isn't enough to keep these people running then give them more obviously I don't, I don't know. they probably can't afford to but i don't know yeah here yeah, he's I sent a letter with nearly 200 colleagues in the Senate and House with a simple message. Jesus Christ. Oh, well, they're boned. Yep. Oh. We know what happens now. Bullshit. Gaslight and Bernie. I think this helped. No, this did not help. What helped? No. Double D, whatever nonsense, bullshit bot you are. Was the pilot saying that they will strike? Yeah. Right. Okay. Look at all the bots. It's so funny. Right. Isn't this a bot account? Maybe. All right. Um, so, solidarity with the workers, solidarity with UPS drivers. I don't want to see anybody have to go out on strike because that means that they will have serious impacts to their income. They could potentially lose their, they could potentially lose their health care. We've seen that happen often, that during the strike, management pulls health care for these guys. you got people that are sick. you got people whose wives and families, I mean, like, here, UPS telling everyone how mean the Teamsters are. We did this one last week. Yep, still funny. So, getting back to the two of us. You know, you know what my thing with this union stuff, I feel like, is? I, it feels reformist. In the well, same way, voting harder feels reformist. You know, like we're all, we're supposed to be happy for little crumbs and whatever. Like, I don't you know. Like you're I, trying to reform a system as opposed to taking it over. Well, no, you're trying to get more out of the people that are. They don't. You know, they will give you as little as they absolutely have to give you, and you have to. I get that. Do all you can do to make sure that so you stop get... accepting it. Well, the problem is, is that like life. Stop accepting the crumbs they give you. Life and yeah, I, rent, I, bro. And... Life's gonna keep going, regardless. Mm -hmm. Like you might as well take the like mm -hmm. sacrifice now. Well, before it gets worse. That's nobody ever wants to actually take the hit. Nobody no. wants to be in the and no one wants to, take to start. The hit. No one wants to start the general strike either. So, but this is this is my thing: is that union, unions in and of themselves are like doing the least amount they can do, instead of going uh, full gusto and throwing everything they got at the wall. Like it's wartime. Like they've been at war. It's time to start fighting back. Not, you know, I don't know. Again, reformist. It feels like, you know, mm -hmm. so. I just want to get and, these you know, guys. You know some how I feel about some relief. stuff like that. I, I get some it. Relief, anything like yeah. yes, it, it, in a way, but people are desperate, man. It's it. They've been getting crushed for so long. It's just they need something. They they badly need something yeah. right now. Um, and and I think that. There is a list for the Teamsters and for the UPS, and I think that they will. Hopefully, 
follow through and bring UPS to their knees. But that remains to be seen. Um, stay tuned, and we will certainly have more next weekend because I'm guessing that by next Sunday, things are going to ramp up and intensify even more.